you've come to the right place. If you're looking to create, launch, and scale a high value online training program. I'm your guide, Chris Badgett. I'm the co-founder of Lifter LMS, the most powerful learning management system for WordPress. Stay to the end. I've got something special for you. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. I'm joined by a special guest. His name is Ken Therio. He's from homebrewaudio.com. He's a course creator. He's an audio professional. And we're going to get into his story, his journey as a course creator. And also, I'm going to try to extract and mine as much audio wisdom as I can out of Ken's experience on the on the podcast. But welcome to the show, Ken. Tell us a little bit about the the journey into audio. Where did that story begin for you? A seventeen-year-old kid with uh, lots of hormones. <laughs> I think that it was really as simple and as primal as trying to impress girls when I was a teenager. <laughs> I was a musician, so that was the thing that I could do well and play guitar and stuff. But, you know, I was poor like most teenagers. And uh, so I couldn't afford to make recordings of myself that weren't, you know, really crappy recordings made on the little boom box, those little tiny uh, round microphones that were built in, you know, to those things. But that's how I started. And I wanted to sing uh, harmony too. I wanted to do all the parts. And one of the songs that I recorded back when I was that age was a Beatles song called This Boy, which if you're familiar with it, it has three part harmony all the way through the song. So I wondered how I could do that. And so I, I sang the good, I played the guitar and sang onto one of the tapes, the cassette tape recorder. And then I borrowed my brother's boom box and I played that cassette recorder back while I sang the second harmony. So all of that was going into the other cassette recorder with this awful hiss <laughs> that was multiplied by uh, going by bouncing it down to that. And then I had to do the third harmony. So I took that recording and played it back while I sang the third one. And uh, yeah, it was God awful hiss in the background, but I, I had three part harmony uh, in a song by God. So uh, that was, that was a, um, an, an interesting kind of foray into it. And uh, it, that's how it started. And I just wanted to get better and better. And I continued to not be able to afford professional recording studio. So I had to figure out how to do it on my own. Well, let's just fast forward in the story to the part where you decided to create courses. How did that happen? Like you're a guy that loves music and audio. What was the spark for the course creator journey? Wow. Um, okay. So the first one was, uh, was a primal uh, uh, motivation called, um, I don't know, uh, trying to impress girls. Then the, the second one, to answer your question, was another sort of primal motivation, which is laziness. So <laughs> I retired from the Air Force. I was an Air Force officer and I served 20 years and I retired from that in 2007. And of course, the, the natural thing is, well, I'm still young enough to get a job. And so, you know, my wife is expecting me to and I did. I put out all the um, the resumes and I did the interviews. And uh, meanwhile, while that process was working itself out, I, uh, I saw something online that uh, that talked about doing voiceovers. And uh, and I yelled it down. About, hey, why can't we read audiobooks? You know, we listen to them. Why can't we read them? You know, we have all this recording equipment because I had recorded uh, several albums by then. So we had a, a pretty good setup. And she she said, ha, no, <laughs> keep on dreaming. Uh, but we actually landed a job uh, doing doing some voiceover work. And then we, we sort of continued to do that. Um, and uh, through that, that was voices.com. So it's, it's called a pay to play kind of uh, way to do 
voiceovers instead of starting your own business. You just sign up and then you answer auditions. And somebody put a, a job out for doing an impression of, you know, uh, caricatures, like some Bronx guy, you know, uh, doing because so, he wanted to put third party voices onto GPSs back before that was really popular on phones. These these things, um, these little GPS units that you used to carry around in your car before everyone had an iPhone or what have you. And you could choose voices on there and change accents and change gender. But they wanted to make these things funny and put characters that said stuff like, what the hell are you doing? You're, you're off. You're off track. You know, that kind of thing. And I answered the ad and I got hired to do the job. And I did another job and another job for him. And he said, you know, yours, you, you get back with me quicker than anybody else that does this for me. And your audio sounds better. And what are you, you know, what are you doing? And I mentioned it to him and he said, can I hire you to produce the audio for all these other guys? And uh, so it basically started that way of me um, getting in with this guy. And then I learned that he started this, this is kind of a long rambling story, but it is kind of interesting. He started this company called Pig Tones to do these uh, third party uh, GPS voices as an internet marketing uh, online business. And that was his, that was his jam. He was an online marketing guru, basically. And, and so he said, Hey, um, how would you like to, you know, learn to make a living online doing on doing an online business? We could do we could do one together. And so I thought that, yeah, that's cool. I wouldn't have to work. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have to go to a job. What they don't tell you is when you work for yourself, you are working all the time. <laughs> uh, so uh, but anyway, I went and he we talked it out and he said, how about you teach people how to do audio recording at home? Because you do that, so you know how to do it. And I thought, yeah, let's do that. So we brainstormed it and came up with a business. And long story short, he kind of dropped out. He didn't. He wasn't really interested in doing it. And uh, so I just took it all over and homebrew audio. Um, and the idea was to teach people how to do it. And two ways to do that is to do online courses. And the other way is to do one-on-one -on -one coaching with folks. And so... That's how it started. Nice. What like help the people with audio? I feel like it's a it's a rabbit hole, and you know, there's like the beginner setup for a course creator. I'd love to hear your list, and then um, for somebody that's you know maybe they've been in business for a while, their courses are doing well, they want to upgrade the home studio. What does that setup look like from a software and hardware perspective? And just let, draw some wisdom on the people. So drop some knowledge, <laughs> some, uh, uh, so this is for course creators. Yeah. The beginners and then the more advanced, like down the road. Okay. The, uh, the beginning course creator is probably gonna start with a, with a pilot course in which I, I learned, uh, through Miracy and Danny, and that is going to be a lot of live live teaching to start. And the idea is just to see if you've got an audience and if your course idea is viable. So you don't have to really worry about it too much at that point, because you're probably going to be on Zoom or some other online conferencing tool in order to teach. But when you move into doing recorded, a scalable version of your course, you're probably going to want recorded videos. And this is where so many people get it wrong. It, and it's not that it's not that hard. Like you said, it can be a rabbit hole and a lot of people think it is. But the um, the videos that I do for my courses are I, I have a good camera right now. I'm just using a webcam for this, but um, I have a good camera that's back there with some lights that will that will be right here. And this is pretty much what the what the video looks like. It's very high quality, better lighting. But you know, I start this way and I talk and I say, all right, we're going to talk in this lesson. We're going to talk about X, Y, and Z. And I have this microphone right in front of my face when I make these videos. And 
then um and, and okay so before i go off down any rabbit holes this doesn't have to be this happens to be a a, a good mic a pretty good mic because i use um you know pretty high quality stuff when i'm recording music and uh, and voiceovers but it doesn't have to be it just has to be close to your mic anything even if you're using if you're shooting your videos on an iphone and it's three feet away from you you can get another iphone borrow your spouse's or your, your roommates or whatever iphone and put that on on a um a little what do you call them um tripod you can put it on something like this what where is it um and uh, and just put like a little iphone holder and or you can just put it on a mic stand. That'll actually be better because then you can tilt it up and have and just have the that iPhone there and use the notes recorder. You know, you don't have to spend any money, assuming you have another phone in the house. The I the, the key thing is no matter what mic you're using, you got to get your mouth close to that mic. And the thing is, when you're doing video, um it seems like, well, how in the world am I going to get my, my mouth close to the camera, which is four feet away? You know, I, I can't just walk up to it and put my face in the camera, you know? Um, so the idea there is you have to use a separate mic, one, um, like I'm doing. This isn't connected to, uh, or when I'm doing my, my course videos, this isn't connected to the camera. I do that separately. Um, or you can get a good mic that actually connects to the camera. So these days, most USB microphones can connect directly to your phone. So in that instance, I could get um, a microphone. Let me see. Whoa, where is it? I oh, thought I had a handy. Um, things like a, like a Blue Yeti. That's probably one of the most popular large USB microphones. And, uh, and you can plug that into your device and just record the audio um, along while you're recording the video. That can be your microphone instead of the phone. So, so the idea is that no matter what mic you're using, even if you're just not even using a mic, if you're using another phone or you could get a lapel mic, but you got to You got to get a mic close to your mouth. And if I had one piece of advice to give to um, to a beginner, to a starting a uh, course creator for making their, their videos for the scalable version of their course. It is whatever device you're using, get a mic close to your face. And when I say close, I'm talking, uh, it depends on how you're doing it, but it shouldn't be more than 18 inches max. And that's if you've got like um, a microphone just sort of, just sort of out of frame right there um, or, or another phone. That's maybe 18 inches, 12 to 18 inches from your face, just pointing in. That's kind of how they do it in the movies, actually. Um, or if you don't care about having a mic in the frame, you don't when you're obviously and, and I don't, you know, here it is. So what? <laughs> all, all they need to see is a person who is engaging with them. They don't care. There's a microphone here um, and they just want the information. And so if you can get um, a good mic like this, you can record the audio separately and then join it up with the video after. But that's a long answer, uh, a long way to say, get a mic very close to your face. And the second part was you said for more advanced people. So for, for more advanced people, I would say, do it this way. <laughs> um, uh, a lot of people don't like to have a mic in their frame, and I don't know why that's such an issue. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that want to stand up and they want to have like a green screen background or something, and they want to be standing up and they want to show, um, you know, at least like the upper half of their body from the waist up or something. Yeah, if you do that, then it's going to be hard to have a mic um, like this, I get, you know, you could stand in front of a mic stand, but then it starts to, starts to look a little unusual at that point. So, uh, most people use lavalier, you know, lapel mics. That's probably the best way to go at, at that point. If you want to stand up and you want to be, you know, show most of, of yourself, then, uh, then you should get, um, a, a wireless lapel, um, mic system. 
And I say wireless because um, the wired ones are very difficult to work with or can be, and you can't get as far from your camera. So just just spring for a wireless one. There's a um, the one I use. I don't have it with me right now, but it's a system from from Rode, same company that makes this mic, called the Rode Wireless Go Two. They've actually now got like three versions or four of that system. But um, in the past, in order to buy a wireless system like that, you're talking four or five hundred dollars or more. Um, nowadays, it's closer to sort of two two fifty somewhere in there. And um, and that gives you the ability to just clip this little thing on. It's not even a mic. I mean, it's not even a, you know, the, the little lapel mic, the little tiny microphone that sits right here. Um, it's not even that. It's just a, um, all right, hold on. This is what it is. And it, uh, this isn't a, you know, I'm not necessarily uh, a shill for road. They're not paying me or anything. Um, but this is just a really good, convenient thing. And, um, and it clips. It's got a little clip in the back like this. And you literally, there's the mic. And you just clip it onto your, I don't really have a, like, you'd want a button-down shirt. For you, it would work perfect. You could just, just plug it right in right there. Um, I'd have to, like, pinch my shirt or something and stick it on like that. But this is all you do. And the other piece of it is a receiver, and that goes on your camera. But it also, this also goes straight into a computer, so it doesn't have to go into a camera. And that gives you flexibility. These things also record onto themselves. These are little mobile recorders. So it, it can act as a safety backup in case you uh, did, in case you um, were too loud and it distorted or something. Um, so, so it's, it's all kinds of flexible and easy to use. So if you have to stand up and be kind of far from your camera and you don't want a microphone in there, um, a wireless lapel system, lapel mic system of some kind is my recommendation for people who want to do what you and I are doing. I recommend not using a USB mic. We're taught you, you said people who are more advanced course builders, and, and f yeah, uh, I'm about to actually test a new, um, a new USB mic that I might be changing my tune after this week on this advice. Um, but for right now, I say get yourself a, a good large diaphragm condenser microphone that goes into a, I got a spare one, into an interface box. Ugh. <laughs> See how dusty that is? It's because I'm not actually using it at the moment. Um, so the microphone get, gets plugged into here. And then by USB, this just goes out and plugs into your computer. And this gives you high quality audio, very high quality, like professional quality audio coming from a professional quality mic. And that's the way that I recommend um, for more advanced uh, creators. That cost is going to be uh, the mic that I usually recommend. It's, it's one of the more affordable ones, but it's still very good is about $150, an audio technica one. And, um, and one of these, um, you can get for about a hundred dollars, 110, maybe, um, depends on which one you get. Um, I usually use a focus, right? Scarlet, um, the focus, right? Scarlet solo, I think is like $110, something like that. So you're talking $280 or so. So my advice to advance um, course creators is to make the investment um, of about $300 for good audio for your videos. That's awesome. Let's, let's talk about editing a little bit. If we're coming out with our audio, but we're, we're likely also shooting video. There are some course creators that are audio only, but what, what are the small handful of softwares you recommend for editing course video and audio together or audio by itself audio by itself i like reaper for that and two reasons one is it's just about as good as pro tools in my opinion i can't think of anything that i can't do with it that pro tools can do but it's also super inexpensive it's $60 if you want to use the uh, 
personal use license. And what what they say is that if you start to make money with it, then it's uh, it's they recommend that you go up to the professional uh, commercial license, which is two hundred and twenty dollars. But um, that's all on the honor system. The licenses are all the same. There's no crippled functionality. There's no you know you can use it for sixty days. I mean, there is a trial, and you can use it for sixty days. Um, but they'll they won't stop after sixty days. So that's what they're an awesome company and they're really, really good with that kind of thing. But anyway, Reaper is the software that I recommend using for most of the editing um, of the audio. And for the video, I, uh, I recommend if you're doing video, I, I, I use Camtasia because I'm on a PC system. You can use Camtasia on a Mac or a PC. Um, and that, that lets you do, oh my God, that is so, so amazing for creating courses. It's, um, I, I do, do you, um, I don't know what, what you use uh, for, it, it's great for screen capture stuff. So I, I should, I mean, it's great for everything. You can do any kind of video. It doesn't have to be screen capture, but that's kind of what it was originally designed to do. And then you can take outside audio and sync it up in nothing flat. I'm um, doing that. And so um, those are the two biggies. I also recommend one plugin. Um, there, there's, we can again, get into a long uh, list of things that, that I could recommend. But if you're just going to get one plugin for Reaper, it has a lot of its own built in stuff. You don't need to buy third party um, uh, plugins for it necessarily. But get yourself a reverb removal plugin. I used to say, like in this room, I've got these um, acoustic absorbing uh, foam panels, and that helps cut down on that room echo that is so common uh, for audio that's recorded at home. But nowadays, the uh, reverb removal uh, edit um, is so amazingly good that that really you can kind of wait um, on getting or you might never even need to get the acoustic foam in your room um, because this stuff is so good. And there is one, again, no affiliation at all, but it's called Deverberate 3 by a company called Acon. Um, and uh, the there's another um suite of editing tools and they have a d reverb tool in it and that one is called uh, isotope rx for audio editing it cleans up audio um, you can remove p pops and uh and mouth clicks and uh noise and i mean it's 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 pretty cool but it has a d reverb in it and that's the that's the key thing i'm getting at is um without talking about doing any more editing, um, that, that I think is those three things have, have either, um, for video Camtasia, um, or ScreenFlow if you're on a Mac and then Reaper for the audio and, uh, and a plugin, a D, a D reverb plugin. That's awesome. Thank you for that. What, what about, just actually creating the courses and figuring out what to make you've you've done on your website homebrewaudio.com you have several courses on there what advice do you have for people to actually get the courses done because you have for a lot of people there's tech challenges and you know you're obviously really good with uh audio video stuff but how were you able to like successfully make so many courses like if the technology wasn't a challenge, how did you get through the instructional design challenge? Uh, yeah, I um, used something, especially on this last course, it was amazingly helpful, was a mind map. A lot of people tell you to, to outline your course and you know you can use any number of tools for that, but I found that to not be very helpful from, you know, different people process information differently. And so for me, looking at something like a mind map where I could, where I could add anything and stick it in anywhere I wanted, as far as sequence was concerned, um, that that was super helpful. So 
I, I went in and I just started putting bubbles in for everything that I wanted to teach, every topic. And then if that seemed to be part of a bigger topic, you know, I could always move things around and have that bigger topic be the main module, kind of how it ended up being. But I couldn't have done that with a standard outline. So, so that was the first thing. Once I got all that set up, I did it to where, you know, you go down one side. I don't know if you're familiar with mind maps, but you go down one side. I went down one side and then I went down the other side for my sequence. And whenever I finished a video, I would color that bubble red and put a big green. No, actually, let me back up. I, whenever I finished a video, I would put a big green check mark on that bubble. And because there were main modules and then there were topics and then there were subtopics and everything that branched out, I, I decided that, not, that you can't make every one its own video. So I tried to pack, you know, everything in that logically made sense into one video, not letting any video be more than 10 minutes if possible. And anything that needed to be a video was red. So I could look at my mind map and go, okay, boom, 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 boom. There's all the red bubbles. Boom, 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 boom. I have to do 32 red bubbles. So I'm going to start at the top and I'm just going to you know, mark these bubbles off as, as I finish them. And, uh, and that really, for me was amazingly helpful. I could look at it and go, all right, green dots or green check marks done, 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 done. How many do I have left? And I would make a, a separate bubble that said, you have 13 more videos to do, you know, and, and, uh, that, that is how I went through and finished my courses. And then once they were done, I just put them in sequence in my LMS. I'm a big fan of mind mapping. I, I feel like it changed my life when I learned how to use it because it's, it, I think it's closer to how the brain works. And um, especially when you're starting with a blank canvas, you can bring it like an outline is a very structured yes. thing, but you can get uh, anything I do new. It always starts with a mind map. And if I need to get it to conform to a structure, like a course outline or a spreadsheet, I'll get there. But at first I don't want to constrain the brain and 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 see what's related to what what are the big ideas or the small ideas it's it's a really powerful way of um i kind of say it's like an alternative way to than making a list like even when i do a shopping list it's a mind map i don't even make regular lists anymore <laughs> um going back wow. to the, going back to the technology a little bit um uh, if we're doing like a screen share content, like I do a lot of that because I'm teaching people how to build websites and use software. I'm a screen flow guy. I've been using it for like a decade. Um, but most of what I do is like, I'm just trying to get it done. I'm, I'm just talking over the video. I'm moving around. But then sometimes you can like, if you actually do the audio first, like you have a more polished message you want to do and then you want to, you know, put visuals behind that later. Um, and then there's like the voiceover where let's say, oh, I want to demo this product and then I'm going to edit it and make it perfect and the timing perfect. And then I want to do voiceover. Uh, I guess what I'm trying to, to understand from you is how can we better do video and audio separately so that whether we're doing the video first or the audio first, um, but, but we want something that looks more like a polished commercial than like, oh, this is just somebody just talking and over their computer screen. How can we do that better? Yeah. Uh, teleprompter. Okay. Is, is my, when I'm on screen like this, I tend to, and you've probably noticed in this interview, I tend to go blah, 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 blah. Oh, and another thing, blah, blah, blah. And um, 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 uh, um, um, um. And it's, uh, you don't want to watch. First of all, it's a waste of people's time. If they paid for a course to watch me stumble over my words and, and uh, oh, you know, obviously not be prepared. It won't look professional like you're talking about. Um, so I use uh, on my camera um, a, uh, that might be part of the list of, of tech that you want to uh, have me recommend, but it is a, this is it right here. And that just, I have a, um, it's like a DSLR camera, um, 
uh, Lumix G7. It's technically mirrorless. But anyway, this this slides over over the um, what do you call it uh, lens, <laughs> little round thing. And then I have an app on here that does the teleprompting, and I just stick this inside of the teleprompter, and uh, and then that scrolls while I'm while I'm doing uh, the the actual video and then there's a remote that comes with it that you can stop and start it. I don't like I don't like it going because I might you know need to I don't like it going automatically because it might get too far ahead or too fast or too slow or whatever. And I've tried that. That's a huge pain in the butt to try to um, set it automatically and then have it go. And you're like, wait, 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 it's going too fast. And then it's going too slow. And so I use this and I just zip and stop and then zip and stop and zip and stop. So manual control over where that text is. But anyway, I write that stuff in Evernote um, on my on my computer, which is a cloud-based uh, note app. And that's on my phone too. So once I write it on the computer, I got the script done. And now it's on my phone. I copy and paste it into, this is called the Parrot Podcaster, by the way. I notice I'm doing a lot of P-Pops. Um, Parrot Padcaster. And there's other versions of these, but that has an app that, that lives on your phone. And then you can drop the script in there. And then it will reverse it backwards so that you can slip it underneath. And then, then I'm just looking right at my screen and I'm reading off of, uh, reading the teleprompter, reading my script. And that is, that is a, a talent in and of itself that I, it took me years, literally, to, to wonder why I was, I was looking at the camera going, yeah, well, I mean, well done. It was very good. And the thing was, and I was like, oh my God, that's horrible. I'm, I, you know, I look like I'm a deer in the headlights uh, and, and it's just not animated and I'm not engaging at all. I wouldn't watch me. <laughs> so it takes a lot of practice to, to look at a teleprompter, to get the text right so that you make a nice, snappy, quick, tight video that doesn't have a lot of ums and ahs in it and gets the point across very quickly, but that you do it in an engaging way. So I practice the script and then I look at it and and I, I pretend that it's not even there um, as much as I can. So you're looking at text, but you also have to remember that there's a camera lens behind it and that you're actually talking to people, you know? So, um, you know, it took me a while to learn. I had to almost force myself. In fact, I do. Before I hit record on my camera, I go, you know, <laughs> because otherwise I'll be like this. Hey, um, today we're going to talk about compression, which really is not as hard a thing as it seems. I mean, I literally had videos that looked like that. And I was like, ah, i got to redo it. So um, teleprompter, but make sure that you're engaging with it. That helps it to be professional and tight. Uh, and then you, rec I record the audio separately into Reaper while I'm doing that. So the camera's recording the audio, and then I'm recording into Reaper just like this onto my computer. And then after I join them up in Camtasia, which you could do in ScreenFlow the same way. As far as the screen capture part, where I'm actually not on camera, um, I, I kind of just let that go. Um, I'll be explaining something and I'll go, ugh, you know, that was terrible. I went, um, ah, uh, um, what's the word? Uh, e and so I will snap my fingers and start that thought over again and, and demonstrate the thing um, until until I get it to, to where, you know, it, it didn't have a lot of idiocy <laughs> and, re and repetition behind it. Um, and I cut all that stuff out in the editing process. But I add the audio in before I do any cutting. That's a pretty important piece there. So warts and all, before I make any improvements to the audio, I will sync that audio. So you've got your um, Camtasia or ScreenFlow or whatever it is, whatever video program you're using, and you've got all of your audio that the camera recorded on one track. Then um, I, I bring in the audio that I saved, that I recorded in Reaper. It's the same um, 
bit, you know, it's the same words and everything because it recorded the exact same thing. So I will stick that underneath and it's very easy just to cite it, you know, just zoom in and go and, and sync it up uh, visually. You can tell. Um, once that is synced up, I delete the old audio. Then I cut out, you know, I go in and do all the slicing and dicing. I cut out the bad takes. I cut out the hesitations. I cut out the extra time and all of that. And then I export that audio out and I go into, I could do it in Reaper, but personally I use Adobe Audition for this. And that's just a personal preference. Uh, you could use Audacity, you could use Reaper, whatever you want. Then I go in and I improve the audio. I take out, when you do a lot of cutting in, in video, you end up with, <clears throat> you know, with breaths that, that get cut off or that just sound weird. So I'll go in and, and edit those out and I will, um, you have to be careful not to shrink up the audio while you're doing this. You don't want to delete anything because if you do, then then the audio will be out of sync when you when you uh, open Camtasia again. But then I go in, I take out the noise, I take out the pee pops, I take out the mouth clicks. Um, I will optimize the um, volume and then I bring that back in to the finished video and export the whole thing out together. That's awesome. Um, another use case we see come up a lot that I've seen some questions around that I'm sure you can answer and you kind of already ha have a little bit is what about in a less in controlled environment, like an action environment, like a yoga instructor or a, somebody who's teaching dance and moving around, not just screen sharing at a laptop. How, right. how do we get that person to make good audio, but also still be able to move around pretty well? Is it the, it's the, um, lapel mic situation yes i was just looking at a review i did i did a review of it but i was just looking at a youtube review of of this system yesterday and one of the things they did was they had a guy on a motorcycle <laughs> with a with a um i don't know how he mounted i guess he had a gopro or something and he was using this to record the audio and he was talking in as he was going 70 miles an hour down a highway going, hey, see, and I'm, this is me talking while I'm riding a freaking motorcycle. You don't get much more, you know, where you can't pay attention to the tech than this, you know. And um, and so uh, basically you could either I, I, I don't use GoPro, so I don't know if you can connect an external mic directly to it, but it doesn't matter because these things record audio right on them. So you can record audio onto this clipped right here while you're riding a motorcycle, teaching yoga, um, dancing. I plan to do a dance demo, actually. My wife and I did swing dancing for many years, but I want to show people how to do audio on video um, in several different situations and how to get the mic close to your body. And in order to demonstrate an action video like that, it could be outside, it could be in a yoga studio, like you say that's very echoey and what have you. There might be traffic. There might be other people around. Getting a mic close to your, your mouth helps with all of that. And, and this is a great way to do it. If you're um, wearing a t-shirt or something, um, you mm, see, I, I can still do it. I can clip it to my shirt by folding it over, but it kind of, it's, it kind of wobbles, you know, it's kind of heavy and unwieldy. Um, some people, actually clip it inside so it's against their body and uh and that way it's a little more stable um but yeah i could i could definitely lindy hop with this thing on nope no problem <laughs> if you have partner dancing that might it, it might like ruffle and and bump and whatever get in the way so you might want to keep that in mind um when you're uh when you're demonstrating that kind of stuff but yeah that's really the answer. And when you have to move around a lot <clears throat> and you're doing some, some action, you need a wireless, definitely has to be wireless in that situation. Um, either, you know, lapel situation, it either looks like this or, you know, the traditional, traditional little, um, thought I had one up here, uh, you know, a little, everyone knows what they look like, little lapel mics that just sort of they're little black things with little um, little foam hats <laughs> on that, that sit right here. They're much lighter weight. And you can plug those right into here. So if you want, if you wanted, if this thing is a little too unwieldy, you can get yourself, uh, Rode makes a, um, a lav 
uh, lavalier mic that uh, you can clip here that's much lighter weight. And, uh, and then just clip this to your waistband or stick it in your pocket or whatever and plug it into there. So that's, those that's are, awesome. that would be my advice for that situation. Can you uh, just like educate us on how to prevent background noise, whether it's, you know, family, animals, urban noise, and, and maybe let's just say our, our office or home or whatever, we just can't quite keep it quiet. So what can we do to help with the background noise and, and, and manage it besides obviously solving the source of the noise? Besides, oh yeah, that's obviously the first step. Um, it depends on where you are, because if you're in a gym, if you're, if you're teaching people how to do fitness stuff in a, in a gym that's being used by other people, there's obviously not a lot you can do if you're at home and, uh, and it's the, it's leaf blower time, which drives me crazy, or there's construction going on or a motorcycle driving by or whatever, or there's stuff the family's doing and you really need to get the video done now, but you really don't want to tell them to stop doing what they're doing. Um, the, the best advice to prevent getting that recorded in the first place is just to try to close the door, close their door and then close your door. I mean, these, that's obvious. Um, but if it, if you can wait until the noise isn't there, um, and, but if you can't, um, like I said, getting your mouth close to the microphone is going to be your first line of defense for all of this stuff, for any kind of noise, actually. <clears throat> and then the um, when you when you have pauses in between your phrases, you'll hear that whatever it is going on, the TV or the music my wife's listening to, or if she's singing along or doing whatever downstairs, that sometimes gets recorded. And it usually, you can't really hear it very much when I'm talking, but in the breaks in between, you can. And so that's a matter of editing it out after the fact. So if you get your mouth close to the mic, you probably won't have to worry about the noise while you're talking. And in the spaces where you're not talking, you can edit it out um, just by silencing uh, the stuff in between. Now, there's one other situation and that is, or, or one other thing you can do. Um, I have a, a post on this with a morning dove. There was a morning dove right outside my window with that. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> and I was like, Oh my God, I don't want to kill the bird. But um, what I was able to do was sample that. So I recorded the morning dove all by itself. So I had its voice on my, um, on my, on my recording software and then I fed that with all noise reduction software. You have to feed it. You have to train it what noise is, so it know it, it knows what to re, what to remove. I I was able to um, train. It was in Adobe Audition. I told it, "All right, this is what noise sounds like. This is the sample of noise. Now remove this from my entire file." And it did. It removed only that. Now that works really really well if the frequency is different because. I have a man's voice. <laughs> Actually, my voice is. People say "ma'am" when I talk on the phone more often than I uh, than I would have thought. But anyway, um, there's a big difference between the frequency of my voice and the ooh, ooh, ooh. so it's easier to remove that without affecting my voice. So the the more difference a sound is from your voice, the easier it is to remove by by using noise reduction software. Um, and if it's something that's kind of in the same register as your voice, um, yeah, in my case, I have to sometimes do multiple takes, um, to try to find, um, uh, a time when there isn't that noise. And yeah, that's, that's a tough nut. That's a, that's a, a really hard thing, you know, if, especially if you're making videos, but if, you know, if I really, 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 A, had to get the video done now and B, could not prevent the noise from happening in the house for whatever reason, I would go into my closet with my laptop. I could bring my camera too. Um, I have a pretty big walk-in closet downstairs, and that has a lot of clothing hanging up. And so that helps to, uh, to block out a lot of noise that's coming uh, from, from inside the house. And um, that's a last resort. But it is something I could do. 
and it's something anyone could do. I don't recommend recording in a closet normally, but, um, but if you have a walk-in closet or closet that's big enough to get in there with a, with a laptop and a camera, um, that'd be my last resort. I think I covered everything that I can think of. <laughs> that's awesome. That's Ken Therio from Homebrew Audio. Um, thank you for dropping so many knowledge bombs with us here today. And also for those of you listening on the podcast, <laughs> um, Ken was referencing some things and holding some things up. Go search for Ken Homebrew Audio on the Lifter LMS YouTube channel so you can find that video if you want to see the uh, lavalier microphone and some of the, the audio interface and things he was holding up. Um, Ken, any final words for the people? Tell it, tell us about any course you think you have that might be a good fit for the course builders out there and any other ways to connect with you. Well, I'm actually putting together a course right now, just starting on how to sound good on video. So I think that's the thing that would be the most relevant to course creators. Um, but I also have one that's out there right now. That is that, um, let me just, uh, I always forget the name of it, which means I have to change the title. It's too long, but it is called professional talkers, how to record high quality audio for podcast voiceovers and more. And that teaches you how to just, it doesn't talk about course creation per se, but it talks about recording the audio and then how to edit the audio to make it sound pristine and professional. Um, so those would be the two most, uh, most relevant to to course creators as far as the courses that I'm doing. And you had something else in the in in their question that I just that I any what, other what else way did you for ask me? Something people about? to connect with you? Any other way for the people to connect with you? Oh, oh. Um yeah, there's there's the Homebrew Audio YouTube channel. I have a lot of videos on there um you know talking about specific things of all uh audio recording um topics and uh the, there's also a facebook page for homebrew audio and ken at homebrewaudio.com is my email if you wanted to get in in touch with me awesome ken well thanks so much for coming on the show we really appreciate it thanks for having me chris and that's a wrap for this episode of lms cast did you enjoy that episode Tell your friends and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And I've got a gift for you over at lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Go to lifterlms.com forward slash gift. Keep learning, keep taking action, and I'll see you in the next episode.